He said, I created my people to have dominion over everything. He says, now it seems as if the issue wants to dominate them. Not so. He says, I'm going to pull up some stuff. I'm going to realign some stuff in your life. And he says, it's going to hurt for a moment. He says, but when I'm finished with the potter, come on church, when I'm finished with the clay, he said, it may not even feel like my hand is with you. It may not even feel. There have been some times when I'm like, Lord, are you here? Uh, there have been some times I'm like, hello, Lord, are you here? When I'm talking to him and I'm like, daddy, I'm, and he, sometimes he goes silent because sometimes when the potter has his hands on you, he's not necessarily talking because he's looking at the imperfection. Oh, he's looking at the areas where he have to seal up. He's looking at those areas that he have to make sure to deal with them because he wants to refine you that you and I don't crack under pressure again. You will never crack under pressure when God has his hands on you. Yes, you may bend, but you will never break. In the name of you, you may sway, but you won't snap because God's hand. The people, the people, he says, speak to the men of Judah and the kings. Do I have any kings? I see a young king there. I see another king there. I see another king over there. I see kings. I see kings that are in seats. I don't see empty seats. And we are few in numbers, but I see kings and I see queens in the name of Jesus. He says, speak to the men of Judah. And he says, speak to the kings. Listen, listen, listen to me, church. Saying positive words is not enough to deliver people out of what they're in. I want to say that again. Saying uh, motivational words. You're writing that my daughter. Saying uh, good feeling words uh, in the name of is not just the only thing. Uh, my God, uh, we had better turn. Uh, we had better turn. Put it back on the clay. Uh, somebody say turn. Uh, somebody say turn. Uh, somebody say I better turn. Uh, somebody say I'm the wheel is in motion uh, and if you notice uh, the clay have to turn uh, with the motion of the wheel. Uh, we are turning uh, our faith to the wall and we're saying God as I as there, I said I'm going to turn my face to the wall and I know what God has pronounced over me but I'm going to go and shift that thing back I'm going to go and turn it and make it work somebody say for my good somebody says working for my it's working for my I'm going to turn my face to the wall. I'm going to look to the hills from whence cometh my help. Somebody say, you better turn. We decree and declare everyone in our family is turning. We decree that we will stand as the Moses. We will stand as the Joshua. We will stand as the Ruth. Somebody say, turn turn when we're not just saying it but we know that it's happening because when you are speaking it in faith listen faith comes in the to snatch out your mouth what you are saying in the atmosphere and you gotta mention you gotta remember that doubt will kill and smother faith so you gotta make sure doubt has been arrested and you gotta say God I don't care how my body will feel I know without a shadow of a doubt you've just turned my situation around Someone say, put it in God's hand. Somebody say, turn, baby, turn. Somebody say, turn, baby, turn. I was talking to a friend of mine, and she didn't know um, her tires on her car broke out. As a matter of fact, the tire burst. Um, she's in 95, and all of a sudden, she's in a van. She's there with her daughter. She's there with the family. Um, Little did she know that for that moment, and this is recent, she didn't know that she was going to be in a situation where she was going to have to steer the vehicle. She was going to have to turn. She said, I was getting ready to go and crash right into the wall. God will save us from every crash. He will save her from every crash. She was about to, she said, she said, sis, we call each other sis. She said, I was about to crash right into the wall, and I was able to turn the vehicle. She said, as big as that vehicle was, I had helm. I had control of the steering. And I was able to turn it just in time before it actually careened in the wall. Because it had careened in the wall, all of my children, my grandchildren, would have been flying through. Someone say, turn. God stopped it just like that. They got out of the vehicle all safe. Somebody say, safe. Somebody say, I'm safe in his arms. Somebody say, I'm safe in his hands. I may not be safe in your hands, 
but I'm safe in God's hands. Come on. I may not be safe, oh God, in the government's hands, but I'm safe in God's hands. We may not be safe. Our sons, especially our young black males, will not be or may not be safe in law enforcement hands, but they are safe in the hands of the Lord. Somebody say, I'm safe in God's hands. Even in relationship, we got to leave our children and say, God, I'm placing them in your God is turning the situation around right now. Someone say right now. Somebody say right now. Somebody say right now. And, 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 and you don't need to feel goosebumps. You don't need to say, well, Lord, did you do it? Just say, I know he's doing it. He said, come on, I say, I know he's doing it. He said, I'm going to turn your mourning into dancing. He says, all because you've changed your mind. He said, because you changed your mind, now that situation just changed. Somebody said, what happened? Let's get back to the text. He says, tell them, somebody say the people. So I talked to you about the purpose a little bit. And then he says, now the people. He says, now for the purpose, he says, you're not where I'm, you're supposed to be. That's not your original intent. What I'm seeing on you is not what I have for you. He says, I know my thoughts and my plans for you. He says, so you're not to the fullness of where I desire you. And you're looking like a form that I did not choose. So I got to now reshape everything in your life life. I got to now strip and break just so I can peel back up. Now we're looking at the people. He said, tell them if they forsake me, this is the word. Somebody say word. He said, if they forsake me, what will happen? He said, I will blow on their bank account. I will consume their livestock. Somebody say, what happened? Somebody say, what happened? He said, tell them about burning incense when you read it in Jeremiah 18. He said, tell them not to burn incense to other gods he said tell them don't worship other gods tell them don't allow their gift to become their god I know I gave them the gift of music I know I gave them the gift of preaching I know I gave them the gift in medicine I know I gave them the gift of a mechanic I know I gave them the gift of banking whatever the gift I gave them the coat make sure they don't turn the gift into their own glory Glory. He said, in worshiping other gods, he said, tell them. He said, tell them don't worship their children. I'm putting that. Don't worship Rima. Don't worship Elijah. Those are my sons and daughters. As much as you love them, don't worship them. Don't worship your husband as much as you love him. Don't worship Mr. Jackson. As much as you love Mrs. Jackson, don't worship her. As much, come on, church. As much, as much, as much. Somebody said, don't worship. We only worship the true and living God. He says, because the people, they were burning incense to God. And they didn't know what they were doing. They were opening gates and doors. This is not a message that's going to make you feel good. But it's going to on your spirit right. It's going to shape your spirit right. It's going to correct your spirit. They were opening doors. Listen to me, beloved. They were opening doors. They were opening gates. They were breaking hedges. The serpent was biting. The serpent was, he said, tell Judah that he can't twerk the way he used to twerk. Tell Judah he can't bump and grind and pop that the way she used to. Tell her that she can't. Tell her that he can't. There has to be a standard. Someone say standard. There's too much mixing. And he said, I'm getting her. He said, I'm getting sick. Because how can we say, God, be holy. Okay, okay. Some of y'all don't understand. Okay, we can't sing the world's song. And then we come in and lift up holy hands. It can't work. Somebody say, it can't work. Some do I got anybody that will say, I know I only make God or oh, maybe one or two. Somebody say it can't work. Somebody say it can't work. Somebody said it won't work. No, no, we can't. There's some things that we we just can't do. We can't, we can't sing. And then we sing, we come back in and we say, Lord, lift up your hands and be holy. God says, no, there's too much mixing and it has made that holy thing profane. He says, tell Jerusalem, I will void their counsel out and they will fall. He said, tell Jerusalem, listen to me, church. And then I'm going to go to the place of why he's doing what he's doing. So we can know that he loves us so much. I'm speaking word. He said, tell Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem. I will void their counsel. What? They think that I won't take it from them. Have you ever had a child? And you're like, you keep testing me. I've been giving you space to return. I've been giving you space to repent. I told you that I don't want you to do that. And you keep ignoring me. And you keep thinking that you can get away with everything. And I've not said much because I'm just watching you. He said, why now tell Jerusalem? He said, tell them, listen, that I will make them a hissing. When you read that a little bit more, he said, I will make sure bring their counsel to nothing and they will fall. He said, what? Tell them that they will be devoured by a sword. He said, daughter, tell them. As I was reading this and God was giving this to me, God said, make sure align your life. Make sure look at yourself. He said, tell them, I will make cities desolate and a hissing everyone and a hissing so everyone that passes by will be astonished and hiss. Listen, you can't tell me that a tornado can pass through Arkansas, Illinois, Kentucky, Mississippi, Missouri, and Tennessee, and God is not talking. Church, is God talking? How? How is it? Okay, okay. When I began to study this, he said, daughter, Arkansas, Illinois, Kentucky, Mississippi, Missouri, Tennessee. I began to say, God, have mercy. Because God is talking. He says, I will make the city desolate in a hissing that everyone that passed by it shall be astonished. When I look at the footage of how beautiful homes are there yesterday. Stay with me. Stay with me. I'm almost done, I promise. And then there's a shift. Someone said, God, what are you doing? The Lord said, whatever I got to do, I'll do it. I love my people too much to allow them to fail. I love my people too much. He said, so I'll do whatever I need to do. God looked at Israel at one time. He said, I'm taking you into captivity just so I can save you. Don't you know that God will do certain things to us just so he can save our lives? He will, oh God, God. Sometimes he will actually fence us in. And we're like, God, our back is up against the wall. And God says, you don't know what's coming up, but I got to fence you in so I can save your life. I got to make sure put you in the valley. I got to make sure put you in a place. And maybe it's feeling uncomfortable just to save your life. Somebody said, put it in God's hand up. Somebody said, put it in God's hand up. Somebody said, put it in God's Jeremiah, I could just imagine Jeremiah. Jeremiah was like, why me? Jeremiah was like, Lord, can't you just give me a word that's just going to make everybody love me? Can't you just give me a word that's going to cause the church to be packed every Sunday because everybody knows that they're coming for a feels good word. I, you know, I was having a conversation with Jeremiah. And I said, Jeremiah, you had it, huh? you had it tough. Jeremiah said, do, you, do I got to go? Okay, I got to go back down the house again and tell him this. Sometimes God will tell you something not to make you feel good because flesh, it's not about flesh, but it's about your spirit. Somebody said, God, correct my spirit. Somebody said, God, correct my spirit. God said, Jeremiah, I want you to tell, I want you to tell the people that it's not about goosebumps. He listen, all the messages of God cannot be about doom and gloom. Something is wrong. But all the messages cannot only be about motivation. And then you're gonna get your pie in the sky and you're gonna get your mansion on a thousand hill. There has to be balance. Someone say balance. Look at the clay again. Put it back to the clay. If you notice the hand is on the where church clay. The hand is doing something to the clay. What is God doing in your life? What is God doing in you? What is God doing through you? What is God saying about you? Put it down. What is God saying? What is God saying? What is God saying? God is saying tell them what I want to do. I want to form them. That I'm not finished with them yet. They've not seen the beauty of what I'm getting ready to do. And so God said tell the people listen address S-I-N what is S-I-N, church? Uh, S-I-N is what, church? What is S-I-N? And you add a G on it, it becomes what? Sing. But God says, no, it's not about sing, but address sin in the house. Not just in this house. What's taking place? God, God tell me where, where my, my fault is. Tell me where the iniquity in the house. Tell me where I smell. Okay. I remember in my old house, I had a, I knew I had a, a little mouse because I used to hear a squeaking. And church, 
in the night, I would just hear the little footsteps in my older house, not the current one I'm in. And I would just hear these, and then you hear this. And every time I get up, Pastor Celia, to go, I knew something was not right. And then I would see stuff beaten up, the shoes. Come on, I would see parts of, so it was just baffling to me. Then I would go down, and then I'm like, wait a minute. So I don't have just one in the house. There's a rat in the house. When a rat is in the house, it leaves an odor. It smells. So I would go down, man of God, and then I opened up my cabinet. The rat was also, I, I thought it was a rat, or I thought it was a mouse. I wound up finding out that it was a rat because it was a little bit bigger. And then I'm like, but wait, what the? And then I'm like, Lord, where is this? I didn't know I had an opening. So prophet is, I had an opening I didn't seal. And so I was wondering how, because I heard the squeaking, but the squeaking moved. All of a sudden, there was a rat. It was something big. There was an opening Evangelist Georgia, I didn't protect. I didn't seal it properly. Stay with me, church. I didn't seal it the way I was supposed to seal it. And as a result now, I got what I don't want to have in the house. Now, I was a little embarrassed. You got to now move past embarrassment. Hello, somebody. You got to say, God, I don't care what is happening. I need some help. Then after a while, I said, well, wait a minute. So I remember, I remember getting like a baseball bat, and I said, if I see you, I'm, I'm following you. Come on now. We're just going to keep this real. We're females. I said, if I'm going to bust your head wide open. And I remember I had the baseball bat, and I remember telling, telling my my sisters, my sisters were living with me. You got to make sure, listen, for and I said, make sure, put up everything, seal up everything. It didn't matter what we put up. The rat was always in it or the mouse was always in it. I had a rat issue. There was a one big one especially, and then I had a mouse itself. It was not, see, how did it get through? And uh, when I found the opening, it was coming from the outside. It was a little crack in the wall. It was able to swim through the Why? Because we know that they're able to come in uh, because they don't have their bone. Their bone structure will shift to the wall. Listen, when God is shaping us, we got to shift. Uh, when God is molding us, uh, we got to shift. Uh, we got to be willing to be broken. Uh, we got to be willing to be reformed. Uh, we got to be willing. Uh, whatever God does so God tell me tell me where I smell tell me is it is is the smell tell me where the odor is coming from is it in my armpits is it a spiritual odor is the odor coming from out of my mouth because some things we say out of our mouth is the odor coming from my heart is the odor coming from my spirit or maybe God the odor is he said tell Jerusalem he said tell my kings he said tell Judah I'm coming Coming to make sure that I release her. And I tell them uh, what they need to do. He said, tell them I'm getting ready to pluck up. Uh, I'm getting ready to pull down. Uh, I'm getting ready to overturn. Uh, I'm getting ready to overturn. Listen, listen. Have you ever didn't bathe and you put clothes uh, on your body uh, and you still smell the funk? Uh, he says, I'm smelling some stench. Uh, I'm smelling some funk. Uh, and he says, I don't like it. Uh, he said, I don't like what I'm smelling. Uh, he said, you can perfume it. Uh, he said, you can put older. He said, but it got to be paid. How do we get rid of this thing? Except that we be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. I need to be born. Where is it? So we're looking at the clay spinning. He said, tell them I'm turning. I'm turning them so they can repent. He says, I'm turning this nation because I want to save this nation. He said, I know the thoughts and the plans that I think towards this nation. And they're going around and around. And they keep going around and around. Go back to the potter. Go back to the clay motion. They keep going around and around. And he says, okay, I'm going to have my hand on them. And he says, I'm going to continue to go with them. He says, but there has to be a standard. Someone say standard. The plan is to make sure, pluck up out, pluck us up out of anywhere we're not supposed to be planted. May God pluck our feet out of anywhere. Somebody say, God, pluck me. Say, God, pluck me. Say, pluck my feet out of anywhere I'm not supposed to be. The purpose, the people, the plan. The plan is to pluck you and me up and out. The plan is to make sure pull down 
uh, everything uh, that wants to come to destroy us. Uh, and so God says, I'll destroy uh, everything in you uh, before that thing can destroy you. And then I'll peel you back uh, so you're able to now withstand uh, every attack of the enemy. Uh, listen, God says, uh, I will pluck up uh, and I will pull down uh, and I will destroy nations. It's in the word. Uh, he says, any nation that disobey, uh, church, uh, the time is soaring. Uh, we see it. Uh, we understand it. Uh, we are not ignorant of it. Uh, God said, I'm coming against the haves and the have not. Uh, he says, I'm coming against the Republicans, uh, the independents, and the Democrats. Uh, he said, I'll come against uh, anyone that will come against uh, what my word says. Uh, the real plan is to bring us back into alignment. Somebody say, align my life, oh God. Somebody say, align my life. Somebody say, align my life. Align my life.